the community gives gifts that keep on giving, and they've done it again. Today, I'll show you how small area flow compensation can improve your 3D prints even further. I keep on expecting advancements in 3D printing to hit a barrier thanks to diminishing returns. However, clever people continually find a way to push what's capable and they do it for free so all of us can benefit. Today we explore an example of this called small area flow compensation. Small area flow compensation was invented by Alexander T. Moss who created it as a post-processing script after coming up with the idea and experimenting. It was brought to my attention by Weasless, Proofreader, Hype Man, and Chief Pesterer. More recently, it was introduced into Orca Slicer natively from version 2 beta. Scarf Joints was the headline item from that release, but if we scroll down, we can see that Small Area Flow Compensation was adapted by Majernus Chat with Alexander T. Moss credited. So what does Small Area Flow Compensation actually do? Well, here's a G-code preview of the feature in action, and I'm going to explain these color variations by looking at the problem it aims to address. The extent of the problem will vary from printer to printer, and these examples are fairly subtle. We can see in the middle infill here that we're absolutely not over-extruded. Everything is quite flat, but when we look in the corner at the shorter extrusions, we have lumpiness and a texture that we can feel with our fingernail. We also have some subtle over-extrusion along the edge where the infill pattern stops and turns around for the next straight line. In this other piece, once again, most of the infill is spot on, but on these narrow sections on top, we once again have lumpiness. The problem we're trying to fix is that even if you're happy with your flow rate for most of your extrusions, when we have very short extrusions, the flow rate tends to be a little too high. So what this feature does is examine the length of each straight extrusion, and once this is below a certain distance, the flow rate is reduced, and the shorter and shorter that distance gets, the more this reduction is exaggerated. And now that we understand this principle, we can better interpret this example image. We can see that flow is unaffected in the longer extrusions, but the color becomes darker, which means less flow, the shorter the extrusions get. This won't make a huge difference for every 3D printer, but it's fast and easy to test, so let's look at how to try it. Firstly, if we're using Orca Slicer, we know that this is now included by default. To access it, we need to make sure we have the advanced settings turned on, and then under the quality tab, we scroll down, until we reach walls and surfaces, and it should be the last option there. To enable it, we simply tick the box. This will expand to show the flow compensation model, which we will explain in full later. With this feature now enabled, we can slice a simple cube and see that it's working immediately, zooming in on this corner where the smaller extrusions get darker in color, indicating they have less flow, and they happen to get darker the shorter that they are. If you're not using Orca Slicer, you can still use the original version as a post-processing script, so let's follow the instructions and try it out for Prusa Slicer. On the front page of the GitHub, we'll click on Releases, scroll down and download the version for our operating system, mine being Windows X64. This will download a small zip file. You can extract this wherever you want, but you must ensure that the file path doesn't have any spaces in the name, and I think the shorter the better, so I renamed the folder to SMAC. If we go inside our new folder and look at the address, we can see that the file path is very short and simple. At this stage, you can run the EXE, a dialog box will briefly appear, it will have an error and disappear, that's normal, but the important thing is that a model.txt file is created, and inside that, we have the same model as we saw in Orca Slicer. In Prusa Slicer, we need to come to Output Options and then down to Post Processing Scripts. And in that field, we want to paste in the path and name of the file. Hopefully now you can see why a short file path is going to be preferable here. You'll note that if we're using this as a post-processing script, we can slice that same cube, preview by flow, and zoom in and there's nothing really happening. That's because post-processing scripts aren't applied until we export the G-code. You might have noticed the black box come up then, and if we pause the footage, we can see that our script was being applied in that split second. And if we open the G-code file, the evidence of this will be right at the top. To see what's happened in the G-code preview, we need to drag the G-code back onto Prusa Slicer, which will open the viewer, we can then set that to volumetric flow rate, and when we zoom into the top surface, we can see that our flow rate is being reduced as we head into the corner. Just quickly, if you run the script and find that the resulting flow rates are way off, I'm talking a ridiculously long way off, 
come into your printer settings, general, and make sure that you're using relative E distances. With the feature working, now we need a test object. And this first attempt of mine was wholly unsuited because it was way too big. Remember, this works with small areas, so all these giant bits were just wasted time in filament. So next, I imported a simple cube and played with the scale non-uniformly to make it a better shape and size. But this one was a little too simple, wasting some more filament, even though it's so small. Instead, I ended up designing this specific little piece. It's only two millimeters thick, takes between five to 10 minutes to print, and should only use around two grams of filament. Let's print one to see how it works. To be useful, we want this to slice a certain way. If you slice and the top extrusions are going the same way as the slot, then rotate your object 90 degrees in the slicer to change this. The idea is that when sliced, the top infill is going across the slot, and that means the extrusion length varies quite a bit on the top surface. My target for testing is my CR10 Max. It's got a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which is great for making big objects at a reasonable pace too, thanks to a 0.4 millimeter layer height. However, it struggles with over extrusion on areas with small infill. It's a perfect candidate and we can see this by looking at the first test print. Any areas made up of extrusions that are short are over extruded and bulging up creating ridges. Yet the longest extrusion section actually looks pretty good. You might think that the flow rate is simply too high for the whole print, so I lowered it by 5% and here's the result. Tiny little gaps have been introduced in the edges of the extrusion where they should be touching the border. But despite this, in the areas that have short extrusions, there's still over extrusion and bulging. This proves the problem is there and not just an over extrusion problem in general from too high a flow rate. There's our baseline for what happens if we enable the feature with the default model. For me, there's a definite improvement. The extrusion on the longest section is still spot on. It's still over extruded in the short areas, but it's definitely better, encouraging us to tune further. Therefore, it's time to revisit the flow compensation model. At first, the flow compensation model might look like gibberish, but it's actually quite easy to understand. It's simply a series of values in pairs, and I've pasted them into this table in Google Sheets. The first value is the extrusion length, and it goes from zero up to 10 millimeters. And the matching value is the flow rate, and it goes from zero all the way up to 1.0, which is 100% of regular flow. If we highlight these and put them into a smooth line chart, it becomes a little clearer what's going on. For any extrusions that are 10 millimeters or longer, nothing will be changed and we'll have our regular 100% flow. But for an extrusion that's only five millimeters in length, we can see that the flow will be reduced to around 95%. And we can follow the curve down to three millimeters where the flow rate will be further reduced to around 92%. And the shorter the extrusion length, the lower the flow rate will be following this curve. The slicer can also interpolate for lengths that fall in between those in the left-hand column. For example, a length of seven and a half is in between these two values. So the flow rate will be calculated in the middle of these two values. Let's revisit my test model and understand why it is the way it is. Firstly, the longest part of the top infill is over 10 millimeters. Therefore, this will have normal flow. In essence, small area flow compensation is not applied here. However, either side of the circle cutout the sections where the extrusion length is approximately three and five millimeters. In the corners, we have even shorter extrusions, and then we have really short extrusions joining up the diagonal infill. Therefore, this is a test print we can use to make informed changes in the compensation model. And to go with it, I've made this spreadsheet, which you can use too. What we do is copy the default values and paste them into column A. Then you can look at your model and decide where you need more or less flow. For instance, if you still had over extrusion around the five millimeter length, maybe you would lower this to 0.92. But we can see from the graph here that it's not quite a smooth junction. So we probably wanna lower down the values around it. I would recommend adjusting all of the values until the curve is smooth to help the slicer with interpolation. And once you've done this and you're happy, you'll notice that the string that you need for the slicer is output down below. So we can click on this field, use control C to copy, and then back in Orca Slicer, delete the old values from the compensation model, paste in the new ones, deleting the quotation marks at the start and end of the string. Then when we click off, the values will be input and we can slice ready to print. Please note that if you're using the script version, you would edit model.txt and overwrite the values already in, once again, deleting the quotation marks at the start and end of the string. Save this file and re-export from the slicer to run the script again. 
you can then get your new model, compare it to the previous one, noting where it's improved and where it still might need refinement. You can then copy the A values into the B column and make further changes based on what you see in the test print. A third graph line shown in yellow will be there to compare your previous print shown in red. Some people might be happy to directly edit the values in the slicer box, but personally I prefer to use the spreadsheet so I have the graph as a reference. It's worth noting that I'm concentrating on the top infill because that's what's obvious, but this will be applied the whole way through the model. I actually went a little bit down the rabbit hole here, doing test after test, to the point where I exhausted the roll of this yellow filament, but the roll was almost empty and each of these only took 5 minutes, so no harm done. So I switched to a different filament and reprinted the original baseline g-code and then a few final iterations. Here's the final before and after, and overall I think it's much cleaner particularly in the areas either side of the circle cutout. I do have some tiny little gaps in places, but I put that down more to the wide extrusion widths with the larger nozzle. If I angle the camera down lower, I hope it's clearer just how much smoother the version on the right is that has the small area flow compensation applied. Once again, this is a free feature that might be just what you need to squeeze that little bit more quality from your 3D printer. Oh, and we get the added bonus of a cool G-code preview. Thanks to Alexander T. Moss, Majonis Chat, and all of the other contributors for their work. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.